Well, today I thought we would add an Easter themed cookie jar to our growing cookie jar collection. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, we're starting our cookie jar just like we almost always start our cookie jars. We have a piece of white cardstock that's three-fourths of an inch tall by about four inches in diameter. And I have a permanent marking pen. Uh, I find this is a really good size to build my cookie jar base around. I'm making a mark right about where that, that gives me about the circumference of my pen. I know that I don't want to get any glue in this area. I want my glue to be here. For this, I like to use a really thick tacky glue. Um, it makes a good bond without bubbling. We want a good thick glue that's going to dry and adhere our paper because this is going to go in the oven. I occasionally get comments from people wondering about putting the paper in the oven. You have to remember that the flash point of paper is much, much higher than the point at which your clay will burn. So it's really not an issue. Then I go back and I put some glue on this end just so I make sure that this tail is glued really securely to the paper. And now we want to glue that we want to roll this up and make a nice firm base that we can build our cookie jar on. And now I like to make sure this glue is completely dry before I start putting any clay on it. I slide it off my pen because I don't want to accidentally glue this to my pen. I might need that pen later and I don't want a pen in my cookie jar. So, I'm going to set this off to the side and let it dry. When it's dry, I'll come back and we can start adding some clay to this. Alright, so this is all dry now. It's actually dried overnight. So now it's time to start adding some clay to it. I'm starting out with just some white clay. I like to use white for the first layer on most of my cookie jars because it gives a good base to work from. And it kind of blends the paper in. So. We're going to start, and I should have put my TLS, I say this to myself every time, lay the TLS down on its side so that it will um, drain down to where I can use it, and then I never do, and then I struggle. So I'm going to put just a little TLS, translucent liquid Sculpey, that's our glue, put that on the top. And I've got just a thin snake of clay. Now, I've made this cookie jar, well, I should say failed at making this cookie jar a couple of times because I have an unfortunate habit of making it too fat, of adding too much clay to this first step. I just want to add a little bit of dimension up here at the very top. I don't want to make him too bulky. So I'm just kind of easing this clay down the sides of our base and trying to make kind of a smooth transition from a wider top down to our, our paper. And I think I'm going to this time do this layer, this under layer, in actually a couple of steps. It means it's going to take a little longer to make the cookie jar, but I think it's going to make a much better looking cookie jar in the end. So I am going to Trim this off even with the top. 
and we can use some sandpaper when we come back. So I'm going to go put this into a preheated oven. My oven's about 250. I, I bake my clay around 250 because my oven tends to go up in temperature while it's baking and I don't want it to go over the 275 mark. So I am going to bake just this little bit of clay and TLS for 10 minutes just to get this cured and then I'm going to, it'll just take a couple minutes to cool and then I'll come back and we'll go on to another little bit of clay. All right, this is baked. It's cool enough I can work with it again. So I'm going to get some more white clay out. And I'm going to, I guess I'll put it here. And I don't remember if I mentioned in the last part, the white clay I'm using is just original Sculpey. Um, and basically, I just want to get a basic egg shape out of my white with my using my white clay. doesn't have to be exactly an egg shape but just something that's going to so that when we look at the cookie jar we know that this is a chick sitting in an egg not sitting in a basket hopefully and we can refine the shape a little more when we get out our purple clay which we're going to cover this white layer with Squeezing tight here at the bottom. I'll get just a little more clay. <clears throat> and use your fingers to work your clay out flat. And on these areas, I am putting raw clay to raw clay, so I don't need the TLS, um, even though it is going to work up onto the um, baked clay. It's still it's anchored onto my raw clay. My goal here is to make this as smooth as I can get it. I don't want any like weirdness up here at the top. I want to get rid of those kind of marks. But I don't want to add a lot of bulk at this point because we're going to add another layer. But I don't like to build with the colored clay. I like to build with the white clay. Get some cornstarch on my fingers. <clears throat> cornstarch allow cornstarch allows you to smooth the clay without your fingers sticking to it. So you're able to smooth better. And especially working on the white clay, it's not going to show. If you were working on a dark color, it could show.
All right, now I've got something that looks, it's okay. If I wasn't trying to do a video with this, I would probably spend some more time defining my egg shape, but I don't want to keep you guys here for, you know, hours. So I'm going to smooth this last little bit out. I will continue refining off camera. I'm going to cut the top off level so that I've got a nice smooth rim here. And I've got a couple more things to do. I'm going to make a short little disc of clay that will fit inside. That's a little too fat. Now let's make a snake. We need a snake of clay, just a little one, that's small enough it'll fit in there. And we're going to cut a short piece of that. And that needs to get baked off with our clay this time. And now let's get a very thin layer. We don't even need the roller for this. cut this off even. I'm going to make sure it's all smooth together. Then I'm going to bake this again for another 10 minutes. And once it's baked and cool off to room temperature, which just takes a couple of seconds um, so far on this, then I'll come back and we'll start adding our colored layers. All right, this is baked and cooled off enough I can work with it. So now I have some purple. Now, I mixed this purple. This purple was this random purple color that I had in my stash, I literally have no idea what color I'm using here. I don't even know what brand it is, but it was a pretty purple. It's just a little darker than I wanted to go. So I mixed it up with some of the same white I'm using. Um, in fact, I mixed all my colors that we're going to use for the rest of this project with white, about equal parts, because number one, the clays that I'm using for the colors were all kind of crumbly, kind of old, the white, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, the white I'm using is original Sculpey, so it's really soft, really easy to use, and it makes these a lot smoother and easier to use. And this also brought this down to a color that was similar to the original cookie jar that I saw online. Now, if you go searching for cookie jars, for Easter egg cookie jars, you'll probably find the one I'm using uh, as an inspiration, because I'm not going very far off... Uh, off what they did. I just thought it was adorable. Um, so, just rolling this out just rather thin. And we are going to go ahead and coat this with some TLS. Remember, TLS works as glue when we're putting raw clay onto our baked clay. And excuse me if I'm still coughing and sounding sniffly. I am still sick. There was no video last Sunday because I've been sick. And I'm still feeling really cruddy, but I do need to get some videos up. So bear with me while I cough and choke and all that stuff. All right. Now we're just going to work this purple up over our cookie jar base. If it tears, don't worry. You can fix it. We can patch that up with some of the extra. We're going to have extra. And I think it was a little too thin in that area. That's okay. I'm going to go through. I'm going to cut off any extra. And I'm going to it up. Let's take a little bit of this clay we cut off, use it to kind of patch that hole. Is there another hole? Nope, the other hole patched itself. Now, 
cornstarch. The only disadvantage to pulling to putting the cornstarch on your fingers and rubbing it over this is if I was using clay that was straight out of the package and cutting off any extra, I wouldn't want to throw that back into my clay package because the cornstarch will affect the texture of the clay. But this is a mixed clay, so it's just good. Any scraps will go into my scrap bag, so it won't matter as much. I'm going to turn the camera off. I am going to spend some time really smoothing this layer of clay with my fingertip. Getting this shape refined. When it's done, I'll come back. I'll show you how it looks. And we'll start working on the lid. All right. I have the purple on here as best I can. It's not exactly the shape I would like, but it's, it's as close as I'm going to get with this clay. So that's, I'm going to set off to the side to bake. Now I have some yellow clay. This yellow clay is, I believe, yellow Fimo and the original Sculpey. I've got a ball of it here. I'm actually going to take a little bit of it. I'm going to kind of flatten it out because at the same time I bake the cookie jar, I want to bake a couple of pieces that are going to go on the head. So let's cut that that way. Kind of cut a little top knot of feathers for our little chickie. But it doesn't have to be perfect in shape. Let's see if I can get that piece out. So I'm going to put that onto my tray along with my cookie jar. I also have some orange clay and this is I think female orange and the white and for this I'm going to make a little snake. A very tiny piece, kind of a little ball, kind of an oval ball almost an egg shape. And I'm going to cut it in half. And that also is going to get baked with our cookie jar. And the other half of this, let's see, I think I will go ahead and get a little, kind of a flat little, almost a teardrop shape. Those pieces are going to go on to our head of our cookie jar to kind of give us a face. So let's look at what we're baking. We're baking our cookie jar. Push this off to the side so I don't drop anything. We have a little yellow kind of feathery piece. We have a orange half teardrop and we have a smaller half teardrop. I'm going to bake all of these for 10 minutes at the recommended temperature for my clay. And when those are baked and cooled, I'll come back and we'll start working on the head. All right, these pieces are all baked and they've had a few minutes to cool off. So now we are going to start working on the head, which is the lid for our cookie jar. So I have more of this yellow mixed clay that I made and I am going to first put a piece of paper in here because I don't want this to stain that too much. And I'm going to kind of make a ball, as smooth a ball as I can. And I'm putting that on there so that I can put this on here and get a good sizing. Okay. Because I want him to be, I want the head and the body of this to be about the same size. But I don't want to stick any of this yellow clay to my cookie jar. There. 
there. Now, let's get that even. Now, the other thing we need to do is put our little pieces on. So we are going to, now that I've got that fit, now I can hold it here without worrying about sticking it. I'm not pressing down hard now. I'm going to pick a side I like for the front there. And I am going to get a little bit more TLS out of my plate, on my tray. Take a toothpick. I'm putting this bigger of these two pieces that I made. I'm going to go up just a little bit more. Push that in. Now this one I want to go flat side up. This would be easier if I was not trying to do it where you guys could see it. Like with a lot of things, I will probably have to do a little more adjusting off camera where I can get this up where I can see it better. There, that looks pretty good actually. Let's get his mouth more straight. Now, I'm going to take this piece. to put this part into the oven. Actually, let's get this little beak straightened out just a little bit. I am going to bake this for probably 20 minutes. This is pretty thick. And once it's baked and cooled, we can come back and we can put it onto the little top thing and bake it again. So I'll be right back. All right, he is baked and cooled. I actually baked him for the 20 minutes and then stuck him in my freezer for five so that he'd be cooled and I can move on. So I want to put this little plug onto the bottom. This will help the lid to keep from falling off. And I need to figure out a way to put him so that he won't be all tipping all over and that I can see the bottom. So I've got this aluminum foil here that I use to texture clay with. I'm just going to make him a little nest so that I can get him to stand in a nice spot here where he's pretty level. I'm going to do my best to put this piece in the middle, but it doesn't have to be exact because I made it smaller, knowing that I might not be able to get it placed exactly in the center. There, I want to get that. So it doesn't slide before it gets baked. So I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes and then uh, when that's cooled we'll come back and we'll start doing some finishing details. All right, now we're going to add some painted details. Um, I've got a toothpick that I've just taken the very tip of the point off with an emery board. And some black paint. This is some of that black paint that uh, Plaid sent me to use in videos for you guys. And we are just going to add a couple of little dots for eyes. Then we're going to put him off to the side to dry in a safe place where he won't get touched. Then I have the white paint they sent me. And I'm using one of the paint brushes, but I'm using the end because I want to put some random dots. And I'm just going to go all the way around, putting some white dots on. I'm going to let this paint dry, and when this gets all dry, we can come back and we can put a clear finish on. All right, all the paint is dry, so I am going to start painting these, or putting a clear coat on with just a little bit of gloss Mod Podge. Remember, 
when using gloss mod podge on anything but especially polymer clay <clears throat> you want a very very thin coat the thinner the coat the less apt you are to have issues with it remaining sticky so I am going to put as thin of a coat as I can on just the outside surfaces. I'm not going to put any on these surfaces that are going to join, uh, just in case this does get a little bit tacky when it dries. So I am going to put this in a safe place. I am going to, and this one I've just used some poster tack to attach him to the popsicle stick or craft stick so I'm going to go ahead and get this painted with this clean my brush and when this is dry we'll come back and we'll see how this cookie jar looks all right here is our finished cookie jar and he has dried without any stickiness at all because I put on a really thin coat uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video be sure and check the blog post for photos and uh, I'll have more information over there about the project. If you like today's video, hit the like button, leave me a comment. What things would you like to see on the channel in the future? And what themes would you like to see for decorating? Um, I've been doing a lot of holiday stuff. Are there any other types of things? Like I'm hoping to do some beachy stuff and some spring stuff and different things. What themes would you like to see for decorating? Let me know. And what other items would you like tutorials on? Let me know so I can do the things that you want to see on the channel. Uh, if you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit the subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.